So I was sent uh, this schematic and kind of a, a breakdown of what was happening with a planer from one of my subscribers. And I thought it'd be really cool to just walk through this with everybody to kind of help maybe more people. Um, the troubleshooting thought process is um, kind of important and knowing where to you know test and kind of what you're looking for is really helpful. So I don't have a actual print out of this, so I can't show you with like the multimeter and stuff like that. If that's something you guys want, uh, write me a comment and I'll remake the video because this only took me like 10 minutes to make, I'm sure. So what he told me was basically he changed out some switches. I'm not sure how he troubleshot that and it's still not working. So what I told him is basically think about how the system's working right now. So what I told him is if he clicks on the on button, he makes sure the e-stop's pulled out, does the contactor pull in? So this K1 up here is the contactor. So he's got he's pushing that on button, is the contactor pulling in or not? That kind of breaks the system in half, if you think about it. What you have here is everything that is 220 volts, it kind of comes up, goes around, comes down to the motor, also goes in over here through these um, resistors, and that is all what I would call your power circuit. Now everything over here, this is your 24 volt circuit, this would be your control circuit. So if my contactor was pulling in, I know there's nothing wrong with this control circuit because it's doing its job. So if the contactor is pulling in, motor is still not turning on, what could potentially be happening? Now we can safely assume some stuff again, with this control circuit's working, then everything back from this control circuit is working too. If it's not working, then we know that there might be, we should probably be looking at these fuses um, and maybe this Q1 switch. I'm assuming this Q1 switch is some sort of power, like ultimate power disconnect. Sometimes these planers or like lathes and things like that have like a master disconnect switch, kind of like they have to be turned on and then you have to hit a start button, if that makes sense. So I would, you, you can assume this was all good if the contactor was pulling in. So then I would start looking basically anything after this contactor. Think about it like if we're troubleshooting the power circuit, that is. If the contact is pulling on in, we know we have power flowing in through these. Now, this right here is basically a fuse that is made for motors. It's you know trying to see what the amp draw is and it's gonna be uh, clicking off or disconnecting that circuit if it gets above 12 to 18. And I, it could be that um, that's like kind of giving you a range and people could have their motors set differently or they could have this actually set. Some of them are adjustable, things like that. So I would go and I would, I would first test on this side of that, um, that fuse. I'm using the wrong word. I'm trying to, can't remember the name right now, but I would test over here, make sure I had 220 volts. If I had 220 volts here, I would know that um, it's something is going wrong inside this circuit. I would then go ahead and look at it because I would go over to this three or this switch over here, which is your K1. This K1 is coming back to this K1. This is um, this is pretty much a auxiliary switch of some sort. It's probably making sure that it's running. It, um, so I would go back over here. You press and maybe you even have to hold in that uh, that contact to if it's not latching because if it's pushing in, maybe there's something wrong where it's got a broken wire up here or something like that. I would go check, check to make sure I had my 220 volts. You will have to take your multimeter and test on the one hot leg to the other or to over here to this other side of the switch to see if you have power over to here. If that happens, then you have some, if you have power over here, motor still not turning on, you'd have to start looking at these. And he sent me a picture and they are some really massive resistors. I'm sure it's just to smooth out the motor, um, but I personally have not dealt much with testing uh, massive resistors just like this one. So um, these guys were here. You probably, I mean, most multimeters do have a way of testing these, but I would look into those. Um, after I tested those in some way, I would then be like, it has to be the motor, okay? Now, if your contactor is not pulling in, this K1 is not pulling in, that means there is probably a power issue that is going all the way back to here, or you have something wrong in your control circuit. 
So first thing I would do, I take my multimeter and I would test this side of the transformer and that side of the transformer. This is the symbol they're using for a transformer. It's just a very um, poorly drawn transformer, but this is it. It's going from 220 volts to 24 volts. Test here, make sure I have 200 or 24 volts and this is gonna be an AC. We know it's AC because this right here and we have a transformer, which is pretty obvious a tra uh, AC circuit now. If I had 24 volts here, across these two my contactor still not pulling off I would then go and just jump over here and see if I was got power energizing my k1 the reason I would do this is because maybe you have something wrong with this magnet in your contactor so testing here testing here if I had 24 volts here when I was trying to start it I would know there was something wrong with the contactor itself if I did, I did not have 24 volts here. I would then start working on this massive AND circuit and just working through each of the switches. I would go ahead and put one of my test leads over here and I would take the other test lead and put it on the opposite side of my, um, this fuse. See if I still have power there. More than likely it's very, it's highly possible it just blew a fuse. Um, if I had 24 volts here, I would then just keep on working my way down an AND circuit. Basically what an AND circuit is, is power has to move through this switch and 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 this switch to get to our um, contact and or our, to energize our contact. So I would just take my multimeter and you could do this a couple different ways. You could start all the way at the end and work your way back, or you could start at this the start and work your way forward. I would just take, put one lead again over here and I would test on the opposite side of this switch. If I had 24 volts here, I would then test here. If I had 24 volts here, I would then test here. And then I would test here. And then I would test here. And then I would test here. And, and at some point you're gonna be testing somewhere and you're gonna be like, there's no power here, but I, let's say I had power here. That means something in between here and here is wrong so it could either be that switch it could be just the the wiring in the switch got messed up he did say he changed some switches so i mean like that is possible it could be that the wires cut or got just rewired in the wrong way so that is how i would go about troubleshooting this circuit just looking at the schematic um, personally i'm a big believer if you can troubleshoot it on the schematic then it's what makes it a heck of a lot easier to go and troubleshoot it on um, in the actual circuit itself. It's gonna help you not get lost so much. I uh, hope this helps you guys. This is kind of a semi-simple uh, circuit. It can get uh, quite complicated. His particular circuit box is um, pretty difficult. It's The wires are all over the place and stuff like that. It looks more complicated than it really is. But if this helped you, I hope you guys will give me a thumbs up. Maybe write me a comment if you feel like it should have been done a different way or you would go about something the different, a different way. Love to hear it. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and this helps you out.